Hey guys, how you doing? Let's talk about Scala functions. Scala is a functional programming language, right? So, functions are the basic building blocks in Scala. In any other programming language, learning about function is as simple as learning one basic syntax. I mean, you just need to know the syntax to define a function. That's it. But that approach doesn't work with Scala. I often see a lot of confusion that makes it difficult for beginners. And I blame two things for causing this trouble. There are several optional components and flexible syntax. They often create a lot of confusion. Then there are a bunch of functional programming jargons. I have tried to separate out some of them in part 2 of this tutorial. And you are already familiar with them such as pure functions, higher order functions, anonymous functions, recursion, tail recursion and closers. But there are few more and I'll cover them here. This video takes a systematic and step by step approach to eliminate all the confusions around Scala functions. So let's start. Here is the typical syntax to define a function. The def, this one. This guy starts a function definition. Then you give a name or an identifier. The next one is the parameter list. You can provide a list of parameters in parentheses. Then the return type of the function. And finally the body. One important thing to remember is that the function must return something. If you think that it doesn't need to return a meaningful value, it should return a unit value. But it must return a value. That's a quite simple syntax. Where is the confusion? The first source of confusion is the optional part of this syntax. Let's create an example function. We will use this example to understand the optional components of a Scala function. So, first thing first, the semicolon. The semicolon is optional. Oh, then how do we terminate the expression? Hmm, why do you want to give a semicolon when you already press an enter key after every line? So, type one expression per line and then press an enter key. No semicolon. You are anyway doing this to keep your code well formatted and readable. But if you want to be sloppy and write more than one expressions on a single line, use a semicolon. So, do you want me to fit this expression into a single line? Hmm, that's a big one. Scala allows you to extend long expressions to multiple lines. The compiler is smart and it will try to combine them and interpret it as a single expression. But it's not always possible to correctly interpret a multi-line expression. So, I recommend you to enclose it within a pair of parentheses. A parenthesis will make it easy for the compiler as well as for the readers of your code. That's enough on semicolon. You still have confusion? Send me a comment. The return key is optional. That's a big problem. How do I know that a function is returning something? And there are many lines of code, which line will return a value? Hmm. You learned a fundamental rule. A Scala function always returns a value. So, you always know that a function is returning something. Now the next question. A function always returns the value of the last executed expression. If the condition is true, this one is the last expression. If the condition is false, this one is the last expression. Right? Let's eliminate semicolon and return. The function looks like this. I can squeeze it further like this. When you have a single line in function body, you can also leave the curly braces. So, the code looks like this. We already learned that Scala compiler could infer the return type of a function. So, the return type is also optional. Now, the code looks like this. These type of single line functions and methods are common in Scala. You will often see them. 
you will also see multi line functions in scala but they will have a pair of curly braces around the body like this that's quite a less typing i like it isn't this equal to symbol optional can i remove this hmm when you have a pair of curly braces around the function body it is optional but don't do that i mean never remove the equal to symbol why is there a problem yes you remove the equal to symbol and the compiler assumes that the function is returning a unit your compiler may or may not give you a warning but it will infer the return type as a unit even if you are returning something else so don't remove the equal to symbol okay i have a question here is my function it doesn't have any parameters can i remove the parentheses that's a real good question let me ask you another question before i answer your question do you know how many ways you can call this parameterless function that's an easy question i can call it like this hmm you can also call it without the parenthesis that's what i asked you can i remove an empty parenthesis your question was different you asked this can i remove an empty parenthesis at the time of defining a function i asked you the same question but at the time of calling a function not at the time of defining it the answer to your question is yes you can remove the empty parenthesis at the time of defining a function but if you do that you won't be able to call a function with a parenthesis i mean this type of call is not allowed because you remove the parenthesis from the definition okay let me repeat it i keep the parenthesis in the definition i should be able to call it with or without parenthesis i remove the parenthesis from the definition i can't call it with a parenthesis exactly but which one should i use use parenthesis when the function has a side effect when the function doesn't have a side effect you should define it and call it without parenthesis and why is that i mean why should i follow it that's a convention a parameterless function with a parenthesis indicates a side effect it will help you and others to read your code great we talked about the basics of scala function here is the list of key takeaways from this session we will continue the discussion on scala function in the next video thank you for watching learning journal keep learning and keep growing